All right, now we will be reviewing pages three and four of your review packet. So once again, this page is called Writing Inequalities. So there is a competition to guess how many gumballs are in a jar. Rocco thinks there are more than 20 gumballs in the jar. Let G represent the number of gumballs. Which inequality would represent Rocco's estimate? So we have A, B, C, and D. So once again, G is the number of gumballs. So we call that letters in mathematics variables. Variables represent unknown numbers. And then we can take um, sentences that use words like more and less and then turn them into a mathematical inequality. So in this case, Rocco thinks that there are more than 20 gumballs. So number of gumballs is less than 20. So that's not it. Number of gumballs is greater than 20. Well, he said more than 20 gumballs, so this would be the correct answer. All right. And if we wanted to put that on a number line, let's say here is 0, negative 20, and 20. He's saying that there needs to be more than 20 gumballs. So this represents um, his estimate. So he's saying it could be 21, 22, 23, 24, and just upwards into infinity. Now just says there has to be less than 40 gumballs in the jar. Written inequality that represents her estimate. So take a look. A would be the right answer. Number of gumballs, G, is less than 40. So once again, if we had something here, 0, I'll put negative 40, and 40 over here. She is saying that it needs to be some amount less than 40. So according to Nyjah, it could be um, negative, two, or sorry, it could be, you know, 35 gumballs, it could be 20 gumballs, it could be one gumball, something less than 40. This technically goes into the negatives as well, based on that inequality, but that doesn't really make sense in this context because there's really no such thing as negative gumballs. Would they both agree that there are possibly 23 gumballs in the jar? Explain why. Well, Mikhail said it had to be greater than 20, and Nyjah says it has to be less than 40, and 23 is less than 40 and greater than 20. So yes. They would agree because 23 is, like we just said, more than 20 but less than 40. So it falls right in between their two estimates. And then we can also substitute in um, 23 gumballs into both of their inequalities to make sure that um, it does produce a true statement. So here's Mikhail's, G is greater than 20. So 23 is greater than 20. Well, that's true. So it makes his inequality true. And then for Nyjah, it was the number of gumballs is less than 40, and 23 is less than 40, so it makes it true. So that's how you can always check your work to make sure um, that that number is in fact a solution to the inequality for substituting in. So why would Nyjah say that 18 gumballs is a possibility, but Rocco would not? Um, so, the reason being, because she said less than 40, Rocco said greater than 20. So, 18 is less than 40, but not greater than 20. So once again, if we take the two inequalities, 18 less than 40 for Nyjah, true. And then 18 is greater than 20 for Rocco, and that is not true. So he would not agree with that statement. On to the next page. So name the shape in each quadrant. So these quadrants, 
Once again, so when we look at the coordinate plane from now on, you're going to be seeing court, like the full coordinate plane with all four quadrants. Um, for most of your schooling, you've only ever seen quadrant one, which is all of the positive numbers. Okay, so as I just mentioned, this is quadrant one, and then it counts in a really strange way. It does count um, counterclockwise, so the opposite of a way a clock would work, right? If you were on, looking at a clock, it would go one, two, three, four, five, six. So it counts this way. So counterclockwise means it goes backwards this way. So this would be two, this would be quadrant three, and this would be quadrant four. So quadrant one has the triangle, quadrant two has the star, quadrant three has the heart, and quadrant four has the pentagon. And now we need to label um, each point on the coordinate plane with an ordered pair. So first one up is A. So really important to note, every ordered pair is written as an X, Y pair. So and you also need to know that X is left and right and Y is up and down. Okay, so kind of think of it like a book, right? So if you were reading a book, you would you always start at the top of the page and you go from left to right and then you go down to the next line. So same thing here. You always start going left and right and then you see how high or low it is. Okay, so for A, for instance, it is over 3 on the X and up 4 on the Y. So its coordinate is 3, 4. So B, once again, we always do left and right first. It's to the left of 0, so it's negative. Negative 1, 2, 3, negative 4 would be its x coordinate. And then it goes up 1, 2. So negative 4, 2. And then C um, is once again to the left. It looks like it's to the left 5 units. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. And then it's down 3. So this one actually has two negatives. It's negative 5, left 3, or sorry, left 5, down 3. And D is to the right 4, and then down 2. Okay. And once again, just as a refresher, right? Coordinate 1, all the positives. Coordinate 2, um, negative x, but positive y coordinates. Quadrant 3 is the one that's negative for both x and y. And then quadrant 4 has positive x, but negative y.